What's up, people of God? This is Pastor Matt, people's pastor. And this is Vanessa, the people's pastor's wife. Yeah, here we go. We got another episode <laughs> of Believers in Love. I think I think this is Believers in Love two and a half. I don't know where the half keeps coming from, but okay. Because we started, we did the one. Then this would be a three. I didn't do half of one. But we didn't really continue the other one. So maybe that could be like a half. And then did the video be- get interrupted halfway through or something? It didn't. We did that one live. Do you remember? I do. And I still think that counts as a whole okay. video. All right. So that was so this will be number three. Episode three. Episode three. Where are these gonna be uploaded besides YouTube and then Facebook? I don't know. I mean we have uh the church has a uh what do you call it pod beam uh so we can upload it there as well and um i guess we'll get to that we'll see make sure the people are being blessed and it's something that the people are enjoying and uh we can continue to expand it and and go from there what do you think sounds good it sounds pretty good okay good appreciate it so what are we talking about today what's the what does my beautiful bride have on the agenda for us today well we agreed to talk about what i wish i knew before getting married to you or before marriage okay <laughs> well yeah I, was say, well, but I mean was it has to be based off of our specific experience however it is also things that we needed to know about the principle of marriage the institute the institution of marriage, Mm -hmm. things that God ordained marriage to be that I didn't quite know before I actually get married, even with counseling. And so experiencing it and overcoming by the word of God in marriage. So things I've experienced. So, So wait, so you use the word overcoming as if there are things you needed to overcome. Definitely. Really? Yeah, not saying of you. Just I get it. I'm being facetious. Oh, because there are things you got to overcome in marriage. This is why other people laugh at your jokes and I don't. (laughs) I was like, how is that facetious? It's just confusing. Okay, well, I don't want to be the so communication is one thing we had to. I wish I learned about. (laughs) That is key. I would say that's probably then one of the number one things you got to be able to do effectively in a marriage. You know, but we talked about communication. Um, but I think it's one thing to talk about it, and it's another thing to actually act upon it um, when you're actively trying to communicate with your spouse. Right. It's being able to have that self-control, that James <laughs> to be slow. No. Mm-hmm. El Dal always says quick, quick, quick slow, slow, slow. Yeah, quick, slow, slow. Yeah, be quick, quick to, to hear, hear, slow, slow to, to speak, speak, and, and slow, slow to wrath. To anger. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So that's very vital. Um, and another great verse is at the presence of many words, sin is found. Yeah. So that's in Proverbs. Um, it just goes to show that communication is more about listening and less about talking. Because you get two of these and one of these. Mm. So that wasn't even on the list, but I'm sure that's something that both of us are still learning how to master. We've only been married seven years. Um, By the time this goes up, you know, our parents, my parents in love would have just celebrated 42 years. Mm-hmm. of marriage and shout out to the Castillos because yeah, 42 years. they've That's been awesome. an excellent example. I, I mean, that. I know that they confess their flaws, but they've been so helpful to me as far as their interactions with each other. And uh, it's just, it's just good to know that even though, you know, you, you haven't arrived yet, you still are always learning. So yeah, we've only been married seven years so we're not experts. No, we're just sharing the things we wish we knew. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think we should make that <laughs> ab- abundantly clear. Like we are not experts in marriage. I mean, we we work on our marriage. Right. Right. Like we we intentionally work on our marriage. 
um, because, you know, uh, it's important, you know, the marriage is not something that you uh, just kind of do and then put on a shelf, right? Like, I think a lot of times people will plan for, for months, sometimes years for a wedding day, but they don't necessarily plan for a marriage. And the wedding day is just one day. Um, but the marriage is the institution of marriage is forever. It's for a lifetime. Yeah. So I think that's very important. I think this is a good topic to talk about. You know, what I wish I knew before I got married, right? Am I saying it right? Right. Okay. Who's going to go first? So we already covered communication. Um, I wanted to point out that the things we wish we knew based on our experience. That gets stuck in, oh, the Lord. in the world. What are you doing in the basement? Oh, she don't do anything. She's a cat. What's up, Egypt? <laughs> Say what's up, Egypt. You got something to say? That's what he You guys remember from our uh, pandemic streaming days, our cat, Egypt, that would always make herself present. Oh, Tama, I try to hide the pattern on this thinking i was gonna hide the whole thing what are you trying to the hide? baby's play yard uh, <laughs> i try to make it look sleek by putting a fabric over it and uh, it's still there whatever she's wow here. <laughs> and she's another baby nine watch. month old yeah sleeping thanks be to, to god yeah um so yeah um i wanted to say that even though um, yes, we wish we knew these things prior to getting married. It's because this information is actually available if you're diligent to seek it out. And that's what we're trying to do to all my couples dating right now for marriage. Even if you're single and you're wanting marriage, you desire marriage. I hope that a couple of these things kind of help you prepare yourself and really because that's what it's about it's about working on yourself in these stages before you're able to come together as one and work as a team yeah i, I would agree with that like I, I think one of the things um people say sometimes is i'm looking for my better half or i'm uh, i want to be with somebody that completes me and those cliches are are cool and i guess it's part of the colloquialism um however marriage is not two halves becoming one it's two it's not addition it's multiplication it's two ones becoming one right and it's that that uh i, I believe it's in um in the, in the book of genesis where it talks about you know a husband will leave his mother and father and uh, him and his spouse will become one. He will cleave to his he'll, wife. He will cleave to his wife. And leave and cleave. Leave and cleave. They teach yeah, that. Leave and cleave. And, and yeah, they teach that. But um, that word is ikad that is utilized in the becoming Hebrew. Becoming one. And it means um, becoming one. It's not so much as the numeral one as much as it is two entities or two persons becoming one. And it's the same word that's utilized in, in um, Deuteronomy chapter six, where it talks about the Lord is one. Um, so again, that's that's proof text for the Trinity there. Um, but I guess that's another conversation for another day. Mm, but that sounds like a good topic for us to talk about. Yeah, yeah, we can get into. I, I think that'd be an awesome topic to talk about. So, especially because so this is the next video. Then let's mark it down. The marriage actually defining it based on the one who ordained it or instituted it the lord god the marriage is the image of christ and the church correct and how christ in ephesians gave himself up for the church and how the church submits and obeys in love to Christ. So the fact is the example that marriage has is that is supposed to prove that the Trinity is three persons that all work as one entity. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So we talk about communication being, uh, and we, we looked at James about being, uh, quick to hear, slow to speak and slow to anger. 
So that's huge for communication because we, we want to be able to listen to understand, not necessarily listen to respond, right? Because mm-hmm. a lot of times when we're having discussions in marriage, you'll be hearing the person speak, right? Um, <clears throat> but only he- hearing them so that you can respond. And then I, I have that uh, the acronym for speak, right, that I give when I talk sometimes. And what is it's um, when you speak, be spiritually discerning, uh, be positively affirming, edify the person, add value, and be kind. Yeah, that's right? some, those are important, important aspects of speaking to someone, especially as a Christian. Um, because it says in scripture to, you know, speak to one another in love. Ephesians chapter four talks about how we are to edify each other and not use words that are for no reason or, you know, that are harmful. And when you are trying to speak or talk in order to be heard, or if you're listening in order to just have a rebuttal, it becomes a fight. It becomes like, you know, an, instead of it being what the crafts affectionately coined, uh, what is it? Strife. Oh, intentional fellowship. Intentional. No. <laughs> it's aggressive negotiation. No, that's and not intense it. Intense fellowship. Intense fellowship. Yeah, yeah. So instead of having intense fellowship, if you're more willing to understand the other person and not trying to defend yourself, then you'll be able to move through a conversation, a discussion, a disagreement from a team standpoint, because that's what you are. You're a team and you both come in with baggage. It's understood that we're all human. We're we're both humans. We're flawed. So that just means that you need to exercise graciousness the way your father in heaven has exercised graciousness to you. Yeah. One of the things you just mentioned with the crafts, and I think that's important too, because, you know, you always hear about people um, don't let anybody into it, right? Like before you get married, which is all true. This is a hundred percent true. However, I think it is important to have accountability partners and, and mentors, marriage mentors as well. And that's not something that people are, um, I mean, we knew to a degree, but we didn't know like how important that would be now, right? Like we have um, couples that we meet with uh, regularly that we're accountable to, right? Like that we're actually, we actually have a group that we're accountable to. And um, and these are people who are inspirational and exemplary so it's not just anybody yeah these are people yeah, that yeah, yeah, we, yeah. that and by our by the grace of god and the blessing to us there are couples who have been married much longer than us so yeah. that and even but that might not always can, be the case right it might not yeah yeah you, it, it's i think the big thing is there has to be a symbiotic relationship yeah where you're learning from them and they're learning from you and then also then it might be the same couple or another couple that is actually like your mentors right where you can go to them right, and counsel exactly. with them um i think that's been that's always helpful i think uh you know uh christian therapy is helpful i think that's important for a marriage um you know to just have maintenance Right, like nothing, nothing always has shout to shout out to marriage. Yeah, maintenance, shout out to marriage ministry. Maintenance, maintenance ministries and crafts. Um, but you know, it doesn't always have to be something wrong, right? It, it to make sure you're getting counsel, make sure your uh, your communication is open. It's and, marriage enrichment it's marriage that enrichment. we yeah most often are a part of. It's just like when you want to do continuing ed for any of your career fields that's, good. that's what this is yeah. continuing ed good it's important so um one thing we wish we knew that marriage will never you'll never stop learning it'll never the counseling that you do just to make sure the preacher will perform your nuptials that's that's just the beginning yeah um 
you don't. I always tell people you learn how to swim by jumping in the water. So, like, you could watch as many videos as you want. Mm -hmm. You could listen to, you know, you can go to counseling on it, but eventually you're going to have to live out your marriage. So, fun fact, this is the difference between Matthew and I, because he believes in just jumping in the water. If you buy uh, an IKEA package, for most of you watching, you probably know that IKEA comes in a million parts, and they have... Don't instructions. Shake. Matthew will not read instructions. What? He'll jump right in. And if he didn't know, Matthew's action oriented. And I'm theory. You'll hear me reference these terms from, I forget the guy's name, but it's a STAR acronym. Star, yeah. About the theory, action, relationship. Right. Too so, dominant, too less dominant. Theory is a thinker, right? I am the type of person that will research the water before jumping in. I'm going to go online and I'm going to see, is there sharks? How many reports of drownings have there been? How is the, you know, like, uh, what is it when the water comes up? To I the don't know. Why are you figuring all that out? I'm already telling you that the water is nice and warm. And then you lost your sunglasses seven times every single time. Shades. So literally you threw your shades. The shades were thrown to Poseidon. Or the <laughs> Neptune. <laughs> Yeah, Neptune. That? <laughs> False yeah. gods. False gods. Anyway, no, the truth is, gods. sometimes with marriage, so okay, I wish, here's another tip. I wish I knew that you could research this stuff. You could research what marriage is. First, you go to the scripture and find out what it is from the beginning. Like, mm, that's good. Jesus said what marriage is. You want to know if the Old Testament is valid? Find out what Jesus said about it. He said it. a man and a woman. A man and a woman. That's what it says? Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. But, you know, that's corny. I don't want to be that way because yeah. I'm understanding and sensitive to why people feelings are valid about what they feel. But the truth is there's one truth. And no matter what, what Jesus, said, wait a minute. the word wait of God, minute. the word. That feelings are valid, but feelings can also be flawed. Not by valid, valid, let me tell you what valid means. Valid means they are real. Okay. They're okay. actual. You got to but address the fact that you have your feelings. Truth. Exactly. Okay. And the Bible always reminds me that my feelings are not truth. Okay. So yes. I'm yes. another person that's victim to having my feelings hurt because of what God wants. And that's okay. Every human being is because we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. But I'm just going to, I've decided to follow Jesus. And that's Amen. it. Um, so yeah, you can research this stuff. You can go to scripture. You can get into counseling, which will lead me to something else later, but you have to take time. If you are not married, but you're betrothed to someone, King James come okay. through. Okay. All right. No, if you're not married, but you're engaged, That's you're courting cool. or you seek to be married, start researching what that means from a biblical standpoint if you're saved i mean that's the best way to do marriage is if you're saved because god created it and it takes a whole lot of his power to be successful at it for, yeah, for yeah a whole lot on, on that note i think it's very important to marry somebody that loves god more than they can ever love you and I, I say that to say because if someone can love a person more than they love God, then they can eventually love somebody else more than they love you. Imagine. Imagine. You don't want that so, drama. No. Nah, so it's important to look, to have someone that loves God and has God as a primary position in their heart and that the secondary position in their heart would belong to you. And, and I say that because there are many a times I know for a fact that maybe I was tripping, bugging, maybe I wasn't treating you right. Talk about in, it. In turn, well, okay. Maybe I wasn't treating you right, or maybe I was being short with you, or not, maybe not giving you the attention that you deserve and need, and that you continue to love me through that my either I would do whether I was being short sighted or whether it was possibly intentional or unintentional, but you love me through that, not necessarily maybe because you love me in that moment, 
but because you love God. And out of your love for God, you will love me and you will reverence me. As like the Bible talks about uh, the wife uh, showing, giving respect to her husband and the husband giving, uh, being uh, 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 protective of his wife. So like, or, or loving his wife, like Christ loves the church. So I think that's very key in understanding what your spouses or really what your, thank you, love. That's probably from Egypt. What your um, potential <laughs> spouse's relationship with is with the father, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because if, if, if there is an, if there's issue and if there's conflict in their relationship with God, um, that is not going to go away post marriage, right? Thinking that 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 things will change or marriage, right? Once you walk down that aisle, that things automatically change. No, the the person that you married, or, or they, it's going to be the same person before you were, that that they were before you were married, probably more on the exponential way because now they don't got front. That's exactly true. You, you cannot. That's another thing I wish I knew before marriage. No, but it doesn't. No, not that you were fronting, but that the flaws that I imagined I could change about you. Mm -hmm. And it's and flaws is a heavy word because it's a flaw to me. It might not be that we do all have flaws, but literally there are things that you might be experiencing that may not be that big of a deal, but because it bothers you so much, you make a mountain out of a molehill. So mm-hmm. major in the minors, majoring in the minors. Yeah. And the thing is how the person was. And then, then there are the things about a person that really are challenging and could make or break a relationship. The point is if you chose to, to marry someone, if you choose to marry someone and this is how they are, know that, it's not going to be you that changes them. Like be ready yeah. before you say I do, or before you sign the papers to keep with that person as they are. And the the thing is, God will continually change us. This is why I say you need to be married in Christ because sanctification is ongoing. So there are ways that I was in the beginning that <laughs> I'm less of now. <laughs> that I'm getting better at not being as time go on. Agreed. Yeah. And same with Matthew. And here's the thing. There are things that I'm still annoyed about that I have to realize, wait, that was there before. That was, I knew that coming into this. So who am I to start trying to complain about it now? If it was really that bad, then I needed to be out. I needed to say, you know what, give me another couple of another six months to see if I could really deal with you with that. This is the thing. You know what I mean? I hear you. <laughs> so that's an excellent <laughs> tell them how you feel. An son. excellent segue into it. You know that however the person is, love is another thing about love is it's not a feeling. So those butterflies and that like literally it's like this infatuation that you have with each other when you're courting. It could be physical attraction. That was strong. You know, that it could be, yeah, I'm not ashamed to say it. Uh, my man, fine. So, you know, say it one more time. that was a, ve- but here's the thing about me. I just want y'all to know. Oh, just, <laughs> Boy, his head go flying out the building. Just say it one more time. When I first laid eyes on him, I wasn't there. No, the Holy Ghost put that there. <laughs> I did not even care. Like, but my mind was different. I'm different than a lot of people. I was on this. I had a one track mind for Jesus. I wasn't trying to be in a relationship. I had a past, and I wanted to start the way the Lord wanted. The Lord wanted this. So, the truth is, you have to understand that marriage is going to be more than just your feelings. And so when those feelings aren't there, you don't need to receive it as you're rejected or things are no longer going to work. I always believe, and the more I spend time in scripture, the more I overcome our challenges, I always believe that whatever caused you to say yes is always there. It's always going to be there. And if you commit it to God and y'all who've been following me as I've uploaded videos about my fertility journey, 
I talk a lot about Psalm 37. Like if you commit your works to the Lord, he will establish it and he will make your righteousness shine forth like the dawn. The righteousness of a good marriage is going to shine through when you commit it to him. So I've already heard testimonies. I'm not willing to go to a place where I, like I say all the time, even if I've threatened to walk out, <laughs> I'm no longer going to, this is forever. And I'm just going to always look for the good and whatever God had put in you. Because the biggest thing, and this is not what I wish I knew before, this is what I learned, is to look for the Christ in your spouse look for the jesus in them look at them the way jesus sees them not based on their flaws because you know jesus didn't die for their sin to stay that way you know what i mean like he died to cover your sin not to allow you to remain sinful that's why i'm not really too fond of where when people say we're sinners saved by grace because that would um what that does is it almost perpetuates the believer who is saved by grace to continue to sin. Because if I'm still a sinner saved by grace, that means that effectually what you're saying is that, is that Christ uh, propitiate being a propitiation for my sins did not cleanse me of that. And, did, and, and that as I was washed by the Holy spirit and regenerated and and received a new person, second Corinthians, second Corinthians 5, 17, I became a new person, right? Mm -hmm. That I am no longer a sinner, right? The, uh, Paul says that- uh, If you've been we, crucified with we Christ. We have, if you've been crucified with Christ, Galatians 2, 20, it's important, I think, to understand who we are in Christ, that we are no longer sinners, that we may sin unconsciously or not purposefully, right? Like there's no, we don't sin- um, uh, uh, knowing that we're covered by grace, right? But so you have a character change mm -hmm. that prevents us from wanting to purposefully commit sin. So you're saying it's not that we're not sinners saved by grace because we are. It's just that we should not stay as the sinners saved by grace. It's like you have to go through uh, the saying, process. You have to start walking forward away from, okay, I'm a sinner. God's grace, I received it. I confessed and believed and I was converted and now you have to move forward now. I'm saying that I, once I receive Christ, once I have been regenerated, once I have been redeemed, once I have been justified by the Lord, once Christ's righteousness has been imputed to my account and my sin nature uh, has been imputed to Christ on the cross, that I, that I, I am no longer a sinner. I have sinned and I have been, uh, you know, I, by, by grace alone and faith alone and Christ alone that I am redeemed, that I am saved. But, I, but in, in my salvation, I am no longer a sinner. I may sin, right? Because all sin, right? Um, you know, but I can confess my sin, right? But I am no longer a sin. I am not a perpetual sinner. Right. But the reason that you've been saved is so that you could continue to depend on the Lord for that righteousness. Like you have to, every day when your weakness is exposed, give it up to the Lord so that he could be your strength in that area. That's where the Holy Spirit come in and the fruit works. That's where if you are a hateful person, that's just angry. That's where the spirit of love comes in. If you're mean and that's where kindness comes in. That's if you're, if you won't wait, if you just have to have it now, that's where patience comes in. So the thing is, there is a whole, the Holy Spirit is gifted to us by grace mm -hmm. be, because we are, we're carnal. We're going to be this way until we have our resurrected bodies. Sure. So I'm, looking at it from the standpoint of, yes, don't say you're a sinner saved by grace and then continue going to the club or continue sleeping around or continue stealing or fighting to the point of committing murder, like literally whatever the sin is. Say that because I'm a sinner saved by grace, I thank God that he's justified me and that I can now go to him so that I can walk in the righteousness of Christ. He died. He became sin. So that we can become the righteousness of God. So how can I be the righteousness of God and still a sinner? 
Well, because now it is no longer I who live, but Christ that liveth in me. Correct. So Jesus it's not about, I'm um, sorry. I'm telling y'all, King James was everybody's favorite. I mean, I don't know what the new millennials are doing now, but the truth is you have that, you have to be able to, to recognize when you have weapons that are mighty through God yeah, for the he, tearing he, down a strong home. No sin became sin that I may become the righteousness of God. Look at the whole scripture. Yeah. I mean, it's never been somebody who was perfect that Christ was doing mighty things through. It was the one who was completely right. yielded and dependent. Yeah. That's good. So that's that. Yeah. For that sidebar. But I'm glad you brought that up uh, because selflessness. Mm. That was one of the other things that we talked about. What we wish we knew before marriage. Selflessness. It's not about you. Ever. Womp, womp. So what does that mean? Okay, so that I'll mean start. Yeah. I was indoctrinated by Walt Disney. And so my knight in shining armor, my prince, even all the rom-coms that I enjoyed watching and the sitcoms on TV, the so the love songs, all of it was convincing me that I was the one that needed to be pleased, romanticized, and that I was always right, you know? And that, unfortunately, is not the case. So when I say that marriage is not about you, I'm saying that it's not about me. I wish I knew that it was not always going to be about me, but that my focus should not have been about how he should be treating me, but how I should be treating him regardless of how he's behaving mm. because that is what it means to respect your husband mm. and because everything god tells us to do for another person our neighbor has never been dependent on their behavior except of course the time when he's telling you how to handle certain behaviors so you're talking about like selfless love like selflessness selflessness yeah so like to love somebody um despite some of their flaws, uh, despite how you may feel at the moment, though feelings are real, but feelings may not be the truth, right? Right. Um, so loving that person and, and recognizing that it's not about the individual, but it is about the cohesive unit, the unit. that has become one. What's best for the team? The What's unit. best for the unit? Um, when I talked about looking at these movies and looking at romance a certain way, it made me build these super high expectations that once I became disappointed, it affected how I served you. It affected how I respected you when God never said that, you know, he, he does listen to scripture. You see identifiers of what is a good or a noble man or, you know, a good person, a love worthy person, but then we also call to love our enemies. I, so. I think what you're saying is really can be summed up as setting unrealistic expectations. Right. Yeah. So that's one thing we can't do. And just to kind of close my point on the Disney shows and all that stuff, they often focus, the world will focus Disney on, wow, by the way. yeah, the world will focus on what can you do for me? Like it never focused on how that prince, the needs of the prince, really, you know, you never really knew. You knew that Cinderella was mistreated and not valued by those in her home, but that this prince, he went out of his way to find the person who who possessed the slipper that he that was left behind it always focused on the woman so you know that's already misleading media society it's very misleading as far as what marriage is supposed to look like that's why you have to look in the scripture and if you're going to look at how christ is the you know is the embodiment or that the husband is to represent christ then he's supposed to give himself up and yeah you know, be able to cover his wife in her flaws and in her inabilities as head. It's often said, and I can't speak for that, but as the wife, 
being the church and submission to Christ, to Christ, submission to my husband, what that really means. It's not about being a doormat. It's not about what I wish I did was become more intentional in my submission. Like, be, was a, like I wanted to, what I should have done was been able to identify uh, the things that I'm resistant against or rebellious against. But submission, submission starts with the husband. The hu mm -hmm. it, it, as submissive leadership, right? That's Washing definitely true. Your feet. I think it was. Um, I forget the brother's name now. That uh, you're out of frame. Wrote. A, I forget the brother's name that wrote this book, um, leading like Jesus, and it just talks about the the serve. Like Jesus came to serve, not be served, right? So. Um, the husband, if he is playing the role of Christ, get your own plate. Then he needs. No, I'm just kidding. Wow. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just kidding. He needs to be serving, right? So, how do I? What's the best way for me to serve my wife? What's the best way for me to serve my home? Um, you know, one thing that I remember a pastor told me was make sure that your wife has what she needs, and she'll always make sure that you have what you need. And I think that goes into, it all wraps into that, you know, uh, Ephesians 5 about, um, you know, be submissive to one another. That's Literally. the first, you know, mm -hmm. everybody leaves that Submit part out. Submit one to another. That's Submit one to another. Verse 22. But as I, or 21. as I submit to you in leading you, right, I have to submit to you also looking at First Peter chapter 3, verse 7 and 8, yep. dealing with you according to knowledge. Right, because I have to know what buttons to push per se that would cause you to know that I'm loving you. That will cause you to receive, I to, uh, you know, know your love language. To know that th these actions or these deeds or these words or these gifts or whatever uh, is that person's love language. That I am serving you through your love language, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and that in serving you, uh, as, as, as being the head, it, the, the scripture tells us that, you know, Christ ultimately died for the church. Mm -hmm. So I need to be in my leadership of this home in my, of you dying so that I can serve you in the most efficient way possible. Yeah. The purpose for him dying, it says he loved and nurtured her. That's not natural for a man to be a nurturer, really. But as the leader, you have the ability to take, to step in and say, no, I'm going to do what's needed for peace, what's needed for your love, Keep for you peace. to feel love. And that's the selfless aspect of it. My love language might not come naturally to him to perform. And I use the love language term very loosely because yeah. I prefer another Gary, Gary Thomas. Love language is from Gary, Gary Chapman. Chapman. Gary Thomas wrote Sacred Marriage. Shout out to our cousin Danielle for getting That's us that Danielle book. Gave us. Yeah, I remember because that. it says, what if marriage was to make you holy? And not to make you happy. Mm. Like, what if you started looking at it differently? I look at marriage as how it's creating, Crazy. how it's building me up to be a better servant of God, a better Christian. In all these ways, I'm able to be better. If I can master or conquer or overcome the challenges I have with selfless submission with my husband, I should be able to do it anywhere. Like, if I'm told to love my enemy, then the husband, my spouse, I, I should, it should be easy. You know, it's not, but it's the idea that it's not based off feeling. And so as Matthew brought up all of the examples in the Bible of why and how, what it looks like to love your wife, I had to look for examples in the Bible. I needed to really pay attention because there are barriers to successfully being able to respect my natural uh nature my nature of rebellion against authority sometimes like i look at it i just had to glance through my history and see how if someone told me what to do i naturally kind of resisted it not sure why that uh exists but the holy ghost will reveal it um 
I also had this, uh, and, and it, submission one time I said is it's very much a mental play it's very much being able to go in your mind and say okay I am not in charge of him like mm -hmm. I do not get to tell him what to do. why I don't need him to give me my vindication like if he upsets me I do not get to tell him where to go and how fast to get there that's not my place well, I do not get to teach um, him Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. No, okay, oh, it says vindicate me, O Lord. I think that's Psalm 17. The truth about submission, I can find examples. Well, Peter gives an example and shows that Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Come on now. Because when Sarah obeyed Abraham, uh -huh. that example was expressed because Abraham had done so many things that were not upstanding when he lied about who she was put her in harm's way uh for self-preservation purposes and even the fact that he wound up submitting to her idea and delayed the promise the promised son like all of that is just a show she chose to listen and obey him and when you read the rest of the passage it, it reveals that it's not about the person. So if I knew that there was something, if there's a disagreement, if there's a, a conflict and he wants, if there's a disagreement or a conflict, I am not supposed to over talk him. I believe it looks like I'm not supposed to reprimand him. That's really what the submission is. I'm not supposed to teach him literally because he's not going to receive it from me and another thing that's very interesting is that the husband who finds the the one who finds the wife finds a good thing and you know a godly wife is from the lord another proverb says like the wife eve even being given to adam because he was not sufficient on his own according to god all of these show that, listen, you can't live this marriage wife as if your husband's supposed to meet your needs. Because truthfully, you need to have your needs met by Christ first. And if Christ is the head of your husband, he's going to be teaching your husband to submit the needs. So let patience have its perfect work. And you'll see, sometimes you got to be silent. Sometimes you got to hold your peace. Don't and say pray. and be and pray. I think and praying pray. is important. You said you we've had a little what do you call it again? Tense like I said, go to God and first. Go to God and and the if thing that's that you were example. praying about, God just kind of gave it to me, and we were able to communicate yep. more effectively, like right after. But one of one of the things that came to mind when I was uh, when you were talking was that even. Man, it, you know, it says that we ought to love our, our wives as our body, right? Yeah. And that it just started ringing to me as you were talking about, um, you were talking around that particular that text because, especially for men, like if you think about it, part of our service is to die for self, right? To die that we would, you know, die for our wives, right? But that doesn't mean prematurely. So part of my service to you is taking care of my body, right? Mm -hmm. Like making sure I go to the doctor, making sure I eat right, making sure I'm healthy, right? Making sure I'm here to provide for you and I'm here to cover you spiritually, right? And and I, I think like as, you know, a lot of us as men don't like to go to the doctors and stuff like that, which I'm one of them. I'm, you know, I'm preaching to, I'm talking to myself too. But as you were saying that, I, I, I just began to think of the importance of a husband uh, at being the head of the home, how important it is for him to take care of his body uh, so that he can uh, be, uh, you know, shepherd his wife and be uh, a servant and wash his wife's feet and, you know, lead the home through, through, through serving and through love. Um, so that just kind of hit me there too. And I, I just, I wanted to say that before I forgot that thought. No, that's good. That's exactly right. The body, your body belongs to me. It does. According your to Corinthians. Body, 
belongs to me. G-rated program. Yeah. <laughs> Let's finish this Anyway. Up. So, yeah, I think we covered everything. Well, then there's one last thing. Okay. But, yeah, so ultimately, ladies, make sure that you're prepared to not depend on your husband for your pleasure. It will be an automatic thing because that was his command to love you. But to know that, look, your desire might be for your husband, but he shall rule over you. It was written right there. That doesn't mean that you lose joy. That doesn't mean you don't have power. There's a whole lot of other information. There's more we can even talk about if you're interested about how powerful and influential the wife's role is. But the truth is, don't no, don't be physically abused and don't be mentally Never. abused. Never. But I mean, you don't have to take that. If there, God can fix that's not anything to him as he submit as, as he's he supposed submits. to be submitted to Christ. Like exactly. There, there's a difference between intense fellowship and uh, definitely physical abuse. Like there's there's no place for that. Or manipulation. There's, and... There should be no mental abuse, which is just as bad as physical abuse in mm -hmm. many cases, right? Um, no manipulation, it, no deception. Yeah, there's no room for any of that. Any of that. Do be very forgiving, very gracious, very slow, very quick, slow, slow. Back to the communication so part. So be quick to forgive. Very quick to I forgive. Mean, talking about that on Sunday. You got to be quick to forgive because uh, if unforgiveness is drinking poison to self. Don't be quick to act. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, these are all fruits, really. The root of it is if you are choosing to respect your husband, you start here's what you do before marriage start thinking of this man uh honorable thoughts do the philippians thing start only thinking true just like practice that true, in your courtship true, you. because if you if your mind is not transformed you're going to continue to hold on to stuff and so then you'll treat him and then it's like a vicious cycle so yeah that's a good way to respect so yeah. you can't just think it's yeah. going to work uh, or, or just know it's going to work because you think it's going to work. Like you literally have to put the work in, right? Uh, just like with anything, right? You have to put the work in, right? Um, I think they say it takes, you got to do something 10,000 times or invest 10,000 hours in something to be an expert in it. Oh, So, you know, you're not an expert to do something 10,000 times. So, how much time is that in days and years or months? A lot of time. Or well, 10,000 times. 10, you got to do 10,000 times. times. 10,000 times. So you got to do something 10,000 times to I mean, be an expert in it. Off the top of my head, I'm a breathing expert. I'm sure there I breathe more than 10,000 you're, you're an expert at breathing. But yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, How can you um, even know if you've done something 10,000 times? I don't know. Like, you know, Somebody probably, probably 10,000 times, right? Oh, yeah, but you, I, I do saying? it like 100 times a day. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Like, there's that's certain true. things that you've read the Bible 10,000 times. Like, you're not saying you're an expert in the Word of God, but you're an expert in reading God's Word. Like, when I used to teach self courses, I would tell them, you know, until you've pitched 10,000 times, how can you be an expert at your pitch? Right? And I get that, but what does that look like? Like, is that, like, okay, so what's 10,000 divided by 100? Or a hundred divided by no ten thousand divided by hundred. A hundred. It's a hundred. Yeah. Okay. So I think. Let me know. A hundred times a hundred. Isn't that like a? No, it should be ten thousand. What did I say? I said ten thousand times. Yeah. Why are you question myself? You're good at that. I am. Yeah. I don't know why. So <laughs> basically, if you have how how many. How long does it take for you to get to 100 pitches? I mean, it depends. Like, you could do... If you did 10 pitches a day. I mean, like, when I was doing when I was doing door-to-door, -door, right? When I was doing my final... Oh, 10 pitches a day for 100 days is 10,000 times. There you go. So it takes you less than a year to master sales. There you go. Okay. Or I just needed that. Pitch. that. Yeah. To master that pitch. Yeah. I just needed that for me to you understand. You can't you master sales until you got 10,000 no. sales. True. Because for every ten pitches, it's only you know one. You might close three or four. Sale. Oh yeah, right on in, on in a well, traditional sales yeah, environment. This guy. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's different, but for you me, know, it'd probably be one back in the day. Really, yeah, something like that. I bet you're right. 
So, <laughs> so we know our strengths and we know our weaknesses. Yeah, praise God. But yeah, I think I think that uh, we think does that wrap it up. I mean, um, get any other questions lined up? Well, before you get into marriage, know your strengths and know your weaknesses. Yeah. SWOT analyses. Bingo. Address all of your triggers. Like you have to know your triggers because it's going to come up and you want to be able to fight it. You want to be able to stand from a place of victory. Um, but you got shit like with each other. Taking, well. Oh, full transparency. Yeah, full we, transparency. we had that. So that's not something yeah, we wish that we, we had knew. Not. Yeah, we were very open um, and honest with each other from the jump. Because that was like to have to come home to have to like think of what like I don't know just to come home to have to like come home to think of what the truth is that you're gonna say or what what did I say last like that and these I, are bonuses y'all yeah I ain't dealing with that man we either gonna be full in or, or yep. we ain't gonna you need be full transfer like, that was full transparency, full transparency. that was like I ain't my... lying to you about nothing like I'm not I don't have time to lie to you and try to remember something we came in the relationship like and, that and, yeah it's too much going on mm. too much stuff to think about than to try to remember what I told you last week. Or, or how about this? Here's one. Let's see who come, people might not come back for this one. How about sharing each other's passwords on the phone? Definitely. Easy. Ain't got nothing to hide. Nothing to hide. You know what I'm saying? And nothing if I hide. feel like I need... And listen, that make sure there's be, a purpose for it because here's the thing. Fellas might get tight. If you man. are a control freak, if is. you're controlling, if you're manipulative, if anything like that, if you're rooted in jealousy, the love is not jealous. Look at First Corinthians 13 verses 1, a verse, focus on verses 4 through 8. Love is not jealous. So why do you need to go in there? You need to choose to believe your spouse. But it's for first and foremost. Like, However, an emergency case, like and so what? Like, if you got my phone, you got my phone. Like, at the end of the day, who cares? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if we really in this to build a marriage, to build a relationship, to to build a, a family unit, right? Like, we've decided to go into, con like, literally a contract under God, like a covenant we've made to one another to build a family for rich or for poor, right? For till death do his part. I'm like, I don't have time. To lie to you, I don't have time to try to make stuff up. I don't have time to be trying to look at some other women and all kinds of stuff like that. Like again, this is you personally. It's me personally. So yeah. we have to it's be. Just, and these are bonuses. We knew. But it's just me. Per yeah. We wanted even. I wasn't dating nobody unless that was how he felt. But I mean, so like, if if, like that. if I couldn't get the passwords out the gate, yeah, I was yeah. looking well, at you on, sideways. You get them out the gate. I didn't want them out the gate. You didn't need them out the gate. I didn't want him out the gate. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like... But if I required point. it out the gate and you denied me, I'd been like, well, listen, holla at me when you was ready. I don't know about that. I don't know about out the gate. You got, you know, it's got to be a filling out process first. Oh, well, okay. So like, I don't know the thing is, until about, you've determined that they're not I'm like... Saying, uh, recording and like, uh, like engaged... What do you call it when you're addicted to stealing? Because if you are that type of person no. and you're still overcoming how to not That's steal... A, like, if you still overcoming, like, because not everybody's saved when they get together. So, you know what I mean? And if you are saved, not everybody's there yet. So, obviously, not out the gate. But yeah, transparency but was I'm an saying, out the gate. Once y'all realize that y'all going to get married, like, y'all passed, like, okay, we did y'all in, like, a serious relationship, like, courting, right? Like, Christians, if you all are dating, it, it should be the courting with the purpose of marriage, right? Like, marriage should be the 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 goal. I'm not saying with everybody, but like you shouldn't be dating somebody unless just for fun or past fun, the time. There's a, op, there's a potential. You should be thinking marriage. of them forever. So, like once you get to that point where it's like, yo, this is what we're doing. We're not going nowhere. Like who cares? Who has? You could take my phone. Just have a purpose. You What's take the my purpose? Phone and go to West Babylon if you wanted to. And What's I the care? What's and, the purpose? And that's how it should be because. This has to be, there can't be any secrets, anything hidden in between this. If we're really going to make this, if this is really going to work in a marriage, this has to be outside of your vertical relationship with God. This has to be your primary horizontal relationship. And so honestly, for you to harp on that is because you know a lot of people that are withholding information from the other. That's probably what it is. Because honestly, I mean, if that's who you are. 
there's no need. How can two become one? My left brain and my right brain work together. Like I know when I'm not analytical about something, right? So I cannot withhold from myself. My left hand knows that my right hand is strong all the time, except when it's busy. Like literally. So that's yeah, that. That's it. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, yeah so yeah. make sure I was gonna say one last thing I have forgotten because it has a lot to do with all of that. But and I guess that's it. Uh, um awesome. Family. Wait, Family. don't do the closing yet. The transparency thing. I gotta close on a fly because I don't have like a dope closing. Um, we haven't established any of that yet. No. But you said here's the bonus thing. Um you said make sure you know everything about somebody. And save it for the next one. I mean, if we talk about this type of thing, what were you saying? That was gonna kill me. Mm. Um, you said passcodes are they a thing? What I wish you knew about marriage. We were just giving tips. Give up the passcode. Who cares? Identify your triggers. Get yourself together. I'm tired. Yeah, identify your triggers. Get yourself together. Choose. Make sure you get an understanding of your spouse and the roles and expectations. That's stuff your marriage counselor should tell you. Um, but yeah, counseling. so yeah. So, All right. Yeah. All right, family. People of God, we out of here. Appreciate y'all. Thanks for tuning in to Believers in Love. Yo, Make drop, sure. Drop a comment, mm -hmm. like, subscribe, throw something, throw a comment in there. You know what I mean? Support the channel. If you don't have a home church, check us out. Believers in Christ Church. Um, yeah. You got anything you want to say, mama? Nope. Thank you, guys. All right, family. Love you, Deuces. and goodbye. Mm, enter a cool commercial thing. Oh, Lord.